lesson three, I will identify, define, and draw a perpendicular line. So today we're going to talk about three different types of lines. To go ahead and get your journal ready, I'm going to tell you that at first we're not going to be um, in our journal. We're going to be just looking at some things on the screen at first, but then we will very quickly be moving back to our journal. So go ahead and put today's date in lesson three, perpendicular lines. All right, so first of all, I want you just to take a look at some things on my screen. I do not want you to put this in your journal. I just want you to listen. Now, I want you to take a look at this little drawing that I have here. What do you see? Hopefully, you see some line segments. We've been talking about line segments in lesson one, and you should see that these are not lines. They're line segments because they have an ending point. They do not have arrows. And you should see that this line segment actually creates a right angle like we, list, like we learned about in lesson two. So we have a right angle here. When lines or line segments intersect, that means that they cross each other. Whenever they inter intersect and form a right angle, we call these perpendicular lines. Okay. Now, take a look at these lines. Okay, so this next set of lines I want you to take a look at. Okay, Are these lines or line segments actually, are they perpendicular? No, they are not. They do not meet at right angles. So we call these intersecting lines. Now, if you look at the arc with the green, what kind of angle is this that we learned from yesterday? So this is actually an acute angle. And if you look at the purple angle, what kind of angle is this? This is actually an obtuse angle. Okay? All right, now, take a look at these three figures that I have here. And it says discuss with your partner, but you don't have a partner right now. But we're just going to take a look at these letters. And I just want you to kind of look at them and say to yourself, do you see any perpendicular lines? Well, if you look right here, these line segments, even though this line segment doesn't go all the way through the letter, you can see that they still meet and they still make or form right angles. I can use this right angle template that I created and I can put it right here inside the angle and you can see that this is a right angle and if I flipped it over again you could see that the other side is a right angle too. So these are perpendicular lines even though they're line segments. Do you see any more perpendicular line segments? How about the L? See right here where this meets this line segment, that forms a right angle. And I can take my right angle template again and I can put it right there in the angle and we can see that it does indeed form a right angle. Oops, I moved the wrong thing there. Let's try this again. Okay, what about the V? These are not perpendicular lines, right? They are intersecting lines. Okay, so let's go back to your journal for a minute, and I know that this is graph paper and you don't have graph paper, but I want you to go ahead and I want you to get <clears throat> a ruler. We're going to use it as a straight edge, and I want you to get your right template, your right angle template from yesterday. If you can't find your right angle template, that's okay. You can take any piece of paper and fold it in half and fold it in half again, and it creates a right angle in the corner. So it doesn't have to be a circle. It can be any piece of paper. You can just go get a scrap piece of paper and fold it in half twice, and where the papers meet, you'll have a nice right angle template. Now, okay, so in your journal, I want you to take your pencil, and I want you to very carefully, I want you to write the word perpendicular in your journal. Make sure that you spell it correctly. It's going to be right here on the computer screen, so there's no reason for you not to be able to spell it correctly, okay? So I want you to write perpendicular, just like it sounds. How about me not spelling it right? Perpendicular lines. And then I want you to take your straight edge, and I want you to draw, start with your end point, <coughs> And I want you to draw a line segment. And then I want you to put arrows on the end to make it a line. And then I want you to use your right angle template. And I want you to put it so that it crosses this line at a right angle. So that you have intersecting lines. 
Okay, now you'll notice that mine are perfectly right straight up and down, but perpendicular lines do not have to be straight up and down. All that matters is where they intersect, they form right angles. And I want you to go ahead and put that little um, triangle, or excuse me, that little square in the corner to show that these are right angle. Okay, then a little bit further down on your page, I want you to write intersecting lines. Okay, so we're just going to write intersecting. And then we're going to create some lines using your, I want you to make sure that you're using your straight edge and just create two lines that intersect but not at right angles. So it doesn't matter how you make them. Just make sure that they do not form right angles. Okay. Now the reason why I want this in your journal is because your journal can be a good resource for you. So if you forget what perpendicular lines are compared to intersecting lines, you can always go back and look at your journal. All right, now let's go ahead and get out your problem set. Go ahead and write your name at the top. And we're going to take a look here at some perpendicular lines on your problem set. So once you have your name on there, it says on each object, trace at least one pair of lines that appear to be perpendicular. If you're not sure if they're perpendicular, you can always use your right angle template to see. Now, I want you to look at this object and I want you to see if you see some right angles. I just want you to go through and take a look at all of these objects and find at least one pair of perpendicular lines on these objects. And then I want you to come back and I'll go through it with you, okay? All right, so on this first set, the only perpendicular lines that I see are right here. But when I look at this brick wall, there are all kinds of perpendicular lines. It'd be really hard for me to identify all of them that you possibly could have, have traced, but obviously the corners make perpendicular lines. And if you had a really tiny pencil or something, you could say that all of these bricks create perpendicular lines. On the clock, the only perpendicular lines I see are where the two hands meet. On this piece of paper, all of the corners make right angles. On this fence, everywhere that the, stri the straight up and down fence posts meet the horizontal, every single place makes right angles. So I'm not going to try to go through here and trace every single one of them, but everywhere that the, that the vertical post cross the horizontal post is a right angle. Okay. All right, now let's take a look at the kite. Now on the kite, these create perpendicular lines. Now when I look sideways, these almost look like perpendicular lines, but if I put my right angle template in there, I'm pretty sure that these are actually obtuse angles. Now when I look at this one, at first, my first thought is I don't see any. But then when I look really closely, this looks like it might be a right angle and this angle here might be a right angle and then on the football kind of like the fence everywhere that the vertical laces cross the horizontal laces would make a right angle or perpendicular lines okay all right so let's take a look at the bottom how do you know if two lines are perpendicular what do you think you should have said that two lines are perpendicular if they create right angles when they intersect. And you could have used the word cross, but intersect means the same thing as where they cross, okay? All right, try to make that a little bit smaller. All right, two lines are perpendicular if, this should be they, if they create right angles when they intersect. All right, in the square and the triangular grids below, use the given segments in each grid to draw a line that is perpendicular using a straight edge. So you're gonna to have to use your ruler here and you're gonna be creating some perpendicular lines. So it keeps saying lines, but this would actually be a line segment unless you put arrows on the end. So all you have to do is make sure that you cross this line at a right angle. Now it's gonna be a little bit easier for me because I have this tool that can draw a nice straight line. 
I just have to make sure that I'm creating right angles wherever I cross it. You can use your right angle template to make sure that you are creating right angles. Okay, all right, same thing here. You can cross it anywhere you want to. You can cross it down here, you can cross here, here, here. It does not matter. Just wherever you cross this line segment, it should create a right angle. All right, now, same thing here. We're going to create perpendicular lines by crossing these lines at exact right angles. I was trying to look to see if there was some way that I could make sure that I was crossing this at a right angle. I guess if I do like this. Okay, so you're just wanting to make sure that you're making perpendicular lines. Wherever these lines cross, you want to form right angles. Okay, let's take a look at the back page here. It says, use the right angle template that you created in class to determine which of the following have a right angle. Mark each right angle with a small square. For each right angle you find, name the corresponding pair of perpendicular lines. So you can see right here for A. Now I'm going to tell you that this can get a little bit tedious, but we're going to go through it together and make sure that we get all of the right angles. Okay, so it's you can see that we're going to be putting little squares in any of the line segments and any of the angles that form right angles. Well, I know that this is a rectangle, and what I know about rectangles is that every angle is a right angle. It has Okay, so let's make sure that we have all of those marks. Now, they already did line segment AB and BD. This little symbol means perpendicular. It's just like an upside down T, okay? So let's go ahead and just write in all of the other ones. So AB is perpendicular to BD and line segment BD is perpendicular to line segment CD because these two form a right angle and then line segment CD is perpendicular to line segment AC. This line segment is perpendicular to this line segment. And then line segment AC is perpendicular to line segment AB. Okay, let's take a look at B over here. Now, first of all, look, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to kind of create a little right angle template for myself by using a square because I know that squares have four right angles. Now, if I take this and I'm going to fill it in with a color so it's a little bit easier for us to see, I'll make it green. Okay, all right, now let's take a look at this. Now, if I put this inside this corner, this is the only angle here that kind of looks to be a right angle, but when I look at it, I'm thinking, hmm, that actually is not a right angle. It appeared to be one, but it really isn't. And then when I look at this, this is not a right angle, and none of the other ones even look to be a right angle. So I don't see any right angles in figure B. So here's what I'm going to write. I'm just going to write no perpendicular lines. And I'm going to abbreviate. There are none in figure B. I don't see any. All right, let's scroll down a little bit. So looking at C, see if you can find some perpendicular line segments and put the little rectangle or the little square in the angle of the one that you think is a right angle. Did you put a square right here in this angle? This is the only right angle that I see. Okay, so now we're going to label. So I have line segment EF is perpendicular to line segment EG. It would have been okay if you said line segment FE is perpendicular to GE. It doesn't matter. Line segments can be named either way. So what do you think about figure D? Take a look at that. Do you see any perpendicular lines? I don't either. So we're going to say no perpendicular lines in figure D either. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so let's look at figure E. Now, again, we have another rectangle. I want you to go ahead and identify all of the perpendicular lines and see if you can go ahead and label them and come back and see if you have the same thing that I do, okay? All right, so I see a right angle here, a right angle here, here, and here. So I'm going to say line segment ZA 
is perpendicular to line segment AW. Now remember, it'd be okay if you said line segment AZ is perpendicular to line segment D or WA. It doesn't matter what order you put these letters in. Okay, okay so that takes care of this line segment. Now I'm going to say line segment AW is perpendicular to line segment WF. Line segment WF is perpendicular to line segment FZ. And line segment FZ is perpendicular to line segment ZA. So that should have got all of them. All right, so what do you think about figure F? Do you see any perpendicular lines? I don't either. So we have no perpendicular lines in this figure either, okay? Did you find any perpendicular lines in figure G? Me either. So we have no perpendicular lines in figure G either. All right, so what about figure H? Well, I see a right angle here and a right angle here. So that tells me that line segment YX is perpendicular to XW and XW is perpendicular to W. V. Okay, so today's lesson was all about perpendicular lines, and what you need to remember is that perpendicular lines create right angles where they intersect, and all of these, I keep saying lines, but these are all line segments, so make sure that you're looking for right angles. That's how you'll know that you have found perpendicular lines. Okay, so let's take a look at this last page. It says, mark each right angle in the following figure with a small square. Note that a right angle does not have to be inside the figure. How many pairs of perpendicular sides does this figure have? I want you to pause the video. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to mark every right angle that you see. And then come back and double check and see if you've got the same thing that I did. Then I want you to see how many pairs of perpendicular sides do you have. So let's do the right angles first. But remember, I want you to try to do this by yourself first. Alright, so hopefully you've gone ahead and marked all the right angles that you can find, and I'm going to mark all the right angles that I can find. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my pen, and remember it said they don't have to be inside the figure, but I'm going to start with the ones that are inside the figure. So here's a right angle. My squares don't look perfect, but and here's a right angle. All of these corners are right angles. So hopefully you went around and marked every single one of these. Okay. Then, I'm going to go and look at the right angles that are on the outside. This is a right angle, this is a right angle, and this is a right angle, and this is a right angle, okay? Now, I want you to mark all the perpendicular sides that you can find and then come back, okay? All right, so hopefully you marked them, and I'm going to go through and mark them too. I'm going to use a highlighter, and I'm going to start with yellow, okay? So, this line is perpendicular to this line, okay? So I'm gonna make a tally mark. That's one pair of perpendicular lines. All right, now, this line is perpendicular to this line. Another tally mark. This line is perpendicular to this line. That's another tally mark. You see the idea here. This line is perpendicular to this line. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Would this be another set right here? Twelve. So the answer is twelve sets of perpendicular lines. I know that's really fat, but you can tell what it says. 12 sets of perpendicular lines. All right, let's take a look at the very last question. True or false, shapes that have at least one right angle also have at least one pair of perpendicular sides. Explain your thinking. I want you to go ahead and try to answer that, and then come back, and we'll see if we have the same answer, okay? All right, so I believe that this is true because perpendicular lines intersect at a right angle. Therefore, if a shape has at least one right angle, 
the sides that form the right angle are perpendicular. I don't think I spelled perpendicular right. Let's let it be that. Okay, so if you come up here and look at this side, and let's just think of a square, for example. Or let's not do a square because it has a bunch of perpendicular lines. Let's do a right triangle. Okay, so if I have a right triangle, let's go back to pen, and I have a right angle here. Pretend that's a right angle, even though it's not perfect. If this is a right angle, then these two sides have to be perpendicular. So any figure that has at least one right angle has at least one pair of perpendicular sides. All right, so make sure that you fully understand what it means for a pair of lines to be perpendicular. They intersect at an exact right angle. If you forget what perpendicular means, you can always come back and take a look at your journal, or you can look at this problem set.